good morning from a rather hot Plovdiv in Bulgaria. So we arrived here late last night and this morning Julia and I hired a car to head straight out of the city up into the mountains to a place that's fascinated us for years. But we'll tell you more about it on the way. Let's go. We are heading due north to a place deep in the central Balkan mountains and famous among all Bulgarians. A place that was built to capture the hearts and minds of a country and to show the incredible future ahead of it. But one that has since gone on to more represent the cataclysmic changes and turbulent history of this country and its people over the past three decades. The monument of Buzludia has actually been closed and been put on police guard in recent years. However, we got the incredible opportunity to meet up with Dora Ivanova, the founder of Buzluja Foundation, a project to save and restore this fascinating place. We were really looking forward to exploring and learning about Buzluja, but this trip turned out to be so much more than that. But let's take everything step by step. We've got our helmets on and apparently there is no asbestos inside, but there is fiberglass, so we've been advised to wear our masks. We were very interested to know as to why and when this monument was built. So it was built 1981 um, and why? It is uh, built to be a monument for the Bulgarian Communist Party. Mm -hmm. and it was showing the bright communist future of the country. It is a monument, so people think it was the headquarters of the party and they did their party yeah. conferences and meetings here, which is not correct. Mm -hmm. So this is a place for the people. It was built with donations from the people and it was built for the people. So they will come every full hour, 500 people will come here and will learn about the history of the place uh, and to admire the architecture and the bright future of communism. It was used for only short eight years between 81 and 89. Wow. And 89, um, it was a transition. Yep. And um, slowly um, the building was closed and the last employees were released and in the beginning of the 90s it was sealed and left or abandoned. The 90s in Bulgaria was a period of huge economic upheaval as the country transitioned from a communist to a capitalist state. Many people were struggling to get by and provide for themselves and their families and turned to looting Buzluja as a way of making ends meet. However, there were some that turned purposely to destroying the building as a protest towards the past and what it represented. And from this moment on, the looting started. So people were breaking in, taking out everything that could be reused, sold. Uh, so they took all the furniture, all the loose pieces, but then they started to take all the metals. Um, and actually the biggest problem is the roof because it was of, uh, made of copper. So there was a very specialized group of people who were taking out the copper of the ceiling or of the roof. And this is why actually all the other materials crumbled and today we all almost don't have any roof mm -hmm. and with the tough environment and the nature here actually it did the rest. Yeah. As you walk through the main entrance there would have been two sculptures on each side made out of bronze. They're currently missing as they were taken and sold for scrap. People coming in they will um, actually first go downstairs mm -hmm. And then you put spe uh, special shoes because you had like perfect marble and perfect granite and you cannot walk with your dirty shoes from outside. <laughs> People were actually coming here on organized tours and taking around the building. In its mere eight years of use, Buzluja welcomed over three million Bulgarians through its doors. Heading in the same route as the Bulgarian people would have over three decades ago, we headed downstairs to the changing rooms. Yeah, be very careful because we haven't cleaned here. Thank you. So we have uh, always um, worked from zero, from the zero level mm -hmm. up and not yeah. down. So here it, it is exactly how it's been. Like yeah, so <laughs> how it's been in the last many yeah. years. And the whole building looked like this, however. Wow. But then after you see it, it's a little bit different. Yeah. Sound really 
really weird, but I really like the smell here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It smells like concrete. wet concrete. Oh, wet concrete, yeah. I thought you were going to say something very, um, very poetic there and say it smells like history. Absolutely <laughs> it not. It just like smells like wet concrete. concrete. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, so here was the wardrobe. So you leave your jacket and your back here. Mm -hmm. And then there was a toilet here for the visitors, which is also with marble inside, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> and so... Um, and then the ceiling was of this very special red velvet-like material. So this was sprued on the wall, um, or on the ceiling in, mm -hmm. in this case. And it was creating a perfect red surface. Mm -hmm. And then we have the marble, which is, by the way, in a very good state even now. That's what I was looking at. It's gorgeous. And then on the floor you have again the, uh, the, uh, the grey gran granite plates. Yeah, you can see a lot of this material on top. Oh, wow. Uh, the first time we came in 2000, to came to document the work, we couldn't actually enter, so we had to first clean all the debris, mm -hmm. which were with a human size wow. uh, piles of debris. As we moved further through the building, Dora was explaining to us how she started the initiative and the incredible results she needed to just get the restoration to where it is today. So I started the initiative, so I founded the Bullitcher Project Foundation. You, you found it all yourself? And yeah. <laughs> incredible. incredible. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, actually it was, um, I saw pictures online exactly like you do, did, or everybody did, and yeah. I was like, whoa, <laughs> what is this that we have in Bulgaria, and why is it abandoned, and how is this possible to, to be like this? And I saw very quickly that nobody is doing any effort to preserve it. And I said, OK, that's not normal. <laughs> so I have to do something if nobody is doing something. So I first uh, dedicated my master thesis for it in 2014. And then, and then 2015, I came back to Bulgaria and founded the Budoja Project Foundation. And then started to talk with people, organize exhibitions, um, discussions. Uh, speak to the media, speak to the politicians, speak to any stakeholders I can think of, <laughs> uh, make meetings uh, abroad, make, meet make meetings in the uh, cities here around Buzluja, in the capital. So basically everything that I could do at that, that point. Yeah. But it didn't work, so... <laughs> So actually, well, everybody. No, it did work. Eventually, it did work. <laughs> Eventually, it did work. But actually, at this moment, um, it was very hard because everybody understood uh, what is the point, but no one wanted to do it. Yes. Mm. <laughs> it's so. Oh yeah. I've lost for words because you're an amazing human being. It's not just <laughs> that you're doing it all. It's that having this, you had this idea, and. Determination. You, yes, you kept hearing no, that no one was willing to do that, but you kept going, kept at it. Must have been very demoralizing after yeah, a while to keep hearing no, but incredible. No, no, I was keep uh, hearing yes. Yes, sure. So I was always hearing yes. Everybody yep. was very happy. Everybody was saying, great, keep it up. <laughs> <Bye. laughs> <laughs> it's very stable. If you're, if you're not you say if you want, you can go up. Yeah. yeah. Let's go up? let's go. Yeah. Do you want to go? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So about the, the scaffolding, we are super happy about it mm. uh, because in the beginning of this uh, year, we knew we have to take care of the last mosaic, which is in danger, that's on the ceiling. And uh, to get there, obviously, we need the scaffolding. Sure. And uh, first, we just came with a small scaffolding, which was one by two meters. It was shaking like this. Wow, especially if it gets <laughs> windy, oh, that must be terrifying, it was, isn't it? It was so terrifying. It was just me and the, the main restorer, and Nikki, the main restorer here. Thank you. 
Okay. Hello again. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to the scaffold. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. That's a great scaffold, isn't it? Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> We are checking, so they are checking each and every stone, mm -hmm. um, if it is stable, and if it's not stable, they take it out, um, and then they clean it, mm -hmm. um, and then they clean the place there where they took it out, and then they stick it back together. Okay. So this is a, a mission for the entire surface, which is about 50 square meters. What we should do as well is um, to create a roof over the mosaic, so we don't have the funding um, and the possibility to do the entire roof. Of course, this is important, mm. and we need to do it as soon as possible. Uh, but we can't wait um, to because we mosaic. will lose the mosaic in this yep. time. And uh, this is why we're doing just a temporary roof over the mosaic mm -hmm. until here somewhere, so something like this, uh, on the top, which will stop the water and the snow for the mosaic. And yes. To keep it safe. Sure. So originally this was all green, and then the hammer and sickle no, it was. I was, was, uh, was all golden. Everything, everything was, gold. was golden. Wow. So I think everything was gold, and then you have the red tesseract. Yeah. But everything else was gold. It was so all gold. gold Do you have any plans or idea at all at this moment, moment when uh, this building will be open for tourists to visit again? We want to open it for tourists in November. So. <laughs> um, if everything goes uh, as planned, um, we will conclude the conservation no. of this mosaic, then we will clean all the debris of the roof. So right now you see there is glass fiber falling, and there is uh, wood, uh, which is in very bad state, and yeah. which is also falling. Yeah. Uh, the metal sheet is uh, rusted and mm -hmm. also falling. So we need to take these elements down. Um, and of course, the metal construction is a good state, by the way, but we need to examine it uh, to be able to plan mm -hmm. and um, the reinforcement and the future roof. Yeah. Um, so this will be the next step. And the third step will be to create wooden pathways um, with railings and uh, specific safe zones so people can walk securely inside. That's and this is, a, this is a, the plan for this year. <laughs> So until the end of the year, we hope and we plan to be ready and to have the, the place already secure and open for visitors. And come down. We continued to a different area of the building to admire the incredible mosaics and the unfortunate damage the elements have inflicted on them since the windows disappeared. <gasps> yeah, we have lots more mosaics. So we have the two circles, the inner circle and the outer, cir outer circle of mosaic. And the outer circle is here, uh, behind the windows which are there. This is yeah. our temporary shelter protecting uh, the mosaics from the element. Mm -hmm. And we created the a full shelter like from the top and from the side to stop the snow and to stop the water and that is do doing quite a good job by the way because really after these measures not even one stone would have fallen down That's we were super happy and super satisfied by the results because before that really for like every day there were pieces Crumbling. falling yeah must have been pretty heartbreaking for you to come back every day and see yeah. something else has fallen and Exactly, exactly. I want to build my own mosaic now. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling inspired. Yeah. Oh, There's one so very cool. cute chicken here. <laughs> As a way to support the restoration, many companies and personalities adopted a mosaic. The money raised was used to build a weather shelter to save the mosaic from complete destruction. Then we headed to the inner section, where the mosaics are just... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. 
girls were not exposed to the water and the wind directly because they're inside. Yeah. Um, first of all, so they're in much better condition. And second, they were done from artificial stone, the smalty, which is much more colorful than the natural stone. So outside, the idea was to mm. connect to the nature and to have a mild, very delicate colors. And here, the idea was to have a theatrical, uh, like, theater-like feeling. Yeah. So you stand in the middle and you have this curtain or this wall of mosaics. Mm -hmm. And here you see the show of light and sound, which was, by the way, very advanced. So they were having technology from the two sides of the Iron Curtain. They'll have an Apple computer here. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they'll have uh, technology from the States, from Japan, from Germany, from Austria, from the Netherlands to create the best possible technological advanced system. Unfortunately, without urgent work, some of these mosaics have little time left before they crumble completely. The last stop on this most incredible of tours is the outside section. And to be honest, we don't need to say a thing about the view. Just look for yourself. So what is the future of the building? Tell us. So first of all, we want to preserve the place and uh, save as much as possible from its authenticity. And then we want to tell the stories of the different people, the different views towards the past. And we think this is a great place to do so. But more than that, we think this is a great um, hall and place for events, for culture, for art. So we imagine um, that people can come here for a cultural event like a concert, theater, cinema. We imagine that there can be modern art, which is again um, interpreting and criticizing or critically looking back to the past or, or to the place, but which is presenting also new forms of art here. And we believe that this place is highly impactful and on a unique spot in Bulgaria. Uh, and it has a lot of potential to, to, to show in the future. So we imagine, for example, um, to project on the mosaic. So, okay, the mosaic should be protected and preserved, uh, but we can project how they looked before. We can project yeah. how they were done by the people and how they fold folds apart and then how restorers were working to preserve them. And we can tell all these stories, but we can tell many more stories about the space, about the art, about the history. So I think this can be a lively place um, with a confer conferences even and different types of events for different types of people. And so we think that the, this uh, inspirational place, which it was for the people who did it, can be also for the future. And of course we should know uh, our past and we should know the good and the bad part about it. But we should, or I think this place can much more and can be part of the future, not of just of the past. So this is what is mo motivating me a lot, um, because we, I think we need that a lot in Bulgaria. We need initiatives, we need people who engage with their heritage, uh, who doesn't just blame somebody else, blame the state, blame 
the invisible power who is <laughs> who has the fault about everything. Um, and uh, such people are part of this team and I'm most happy when I see that this project is inspiring other people to do other projects or to be part of this one and to yeah, create more uh, energy which is creating something instead of destroying something. It is incredibly inspiring. You are incredibly inspiring. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <A> minor. <laughs> oh my god, oh, dark. You see? We told you that this is much more than just to walk around an abandoned building. We met an incredible group of people that share both passion and dedication to not just restoring a monument, but breathing new life into it and building a better future. It's not an easy and certainly not a quick task, but these people, led by Dora, are proof and should be an inspiration to all of us that you, me, Anyone can change anything if you want it enough. As always, it's very challenging, but everything is possible.